Off-mesh links in Unity are relatively hard to work with because there's not really a good way to query for where are all the off-mesh links on this nav mesh. In this video, what we're going to do is show you how, based on the agent's current path, you can detect when it's going to take an off-mesh link, and then you can do something based on that. Specifically, we're just going to show the path that the agent's going to take and show like the little hop that they're going to take whenever they're actually going to traverse that off-mesh link. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by making the nav mesh a little bit easier to work with. This is one of the top things that I get asked in the comments and emails. People are asking me, how can I tell where an off mesh link is at runtime? And how do I know when my agent's actually going to take one of those off mesh links? We still can't query the nav mesh for all of the off mesh links, but what we can do is based on the agent's current path, we can raycast from one point to the next point and see if we hit something. If we have, that means that there's an off mesh link in the way that the agent has to traverse to get to that second point. That's a pretty cool trick, right? Let's hop into the code in the scene to check out how does that look. In our scene, there's a few things going on here. We have several nav mesh links baked into this nav mesh that will allow our agent to hop onto some boxes and even across boxes and then some where the agent can jump down. The agent themselves just has an animator, an app mesh agent. What's important is that we have an agent link mover that will move our agent across an off mesh link. We have simple click to move with the player movement, and I've added a reference to a path displayer, which is gonna do the actual checking if we're gonna be going over an off mesh link. I also make it use a line render so we can see the path the agent's gonna take. So you'll notice that after I clicked, this line render shows the path we're gonna go on, which you can see very much aligns with the path of the agent. Once we hit an off mesh link, we'll see that we go up, over, and then back down a little bit more. Then we hit another off mesh link, where again we go up, over, and down. And finally, the third one. This one is actually using that curve that we've defined on the agent link mover to render this curve. When we have the path from the nav mesh agent, so after I've set a destination, I call the set path with the current agent's nav mesh path. We then get the corners and we check if something's changed so that way we're not raycasting every single frame. If something's changed, then we're clearing our list of corners that are links, which is a list of this new struct link position, which just includes two vector threes, a start and end position. What we do is iterate over each of the corners going from the current index to the index plus one. We use nav mesh raycast, which will return true if it hits something and if there's nothing in the way then we expect it to return false if it returns true that means something is blocking us from getting to that point so that's when we know it's going to be an off mesh link so i'm going to add that to be the start position at the current index end position at the next index and we just keep going until we hit the end of the corners if we carefully consider this code it's actually not very surprising that this is how we can tell when there's an off mesh link there if we take our current path that we see at this agent, we'll see that he has a corner right at the edge of this box. Let's just call it box. The next corner is higher up and farther to the left. So if we raycast on the nav mesh from point one towards point two, it's going to hit the box because the nav mesh is not contiguous from corner zero to corner one. The only possible way for our nav mesh agent to calculate a path from non-contiguous areas is with an off mesh link. So we can tell from this one point to the next point, there must be an off mesh link here. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. If you want to show your support, you can go to patreon.com slash WOMACademy, get your name up here on the screen, and get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. At the phenomenal tier level, there's Andrew Bowen, and at the awesome tier, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Paul Berry, and Rulin. Thank you all for your support. I am so grateful. An update, all that I'm doing is setting the line render positions to be based on the nav mesh path corners and then simulating how the agent's gonna move on the off mesh link based on those corners that we found, which gives us what we see here. So we'll see that works for wide nav mesh links. It works if we're going up, it works if there's a gap. It's the easiest way I can tell you to find an off mesh link from a nav mesh path. That's pretty cool, not super complicated to do. It's just important to remember that because we are potentially doing several raycasts and you might need to do a bunch of these per agent, that that can get very expensive computationally and we do not want to bog down our game 
to do this. You might only do the ray casts after the corners array length has changed or something like that. That way we minimize the number of ray casts that we have to do each frame. It's not a lot left to say on that topic, but there is a little surprise for you in this repository if you check it out, GitHub link in the description, where I'm showing you how the agent will traverse a nav mesh link based on that agent link mover script that we did back in AI series 27, maybe 17, where we could customize the agent link traversal method based on the area type. There's a little editor script in there if you want to check out that. If you got value out of this video or the AI series, go ahead and like and subscribe to help the channel grow, reach more people, and I'm valued more people. This new video is posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.